Welcome back, everybody, to another Kicking Tables. Today, we are delighted to welcome Matt Ryan, the trade show manager at Bezier Games, to talk about Castles of Mad King Ludwig, the collector's edition, out now on Kickstarter. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's great to get to talk to you guys, especially about probably my favorite Bezier game. Okay, well, you know what? Tell us all about it then. Um, I've actually not played this game myself, um, so I'm excited to see you've got a collector's edition coming out. It's obviously going to introduce people to the game for the first time. But what is uh, Castles of Mad King Ludwig? That's an awesome question. So... Castles of Mad King Ludwig um, is a game where you are going to be essentially buying these different extravagant rooms um, and putting them into a castle that you're building personally in front of yourself. Um, and you'll have different goals and different things that are going to collect you various points. But one of the cool things is, is you're building these rooms in your castles. Certain rooms are going to have synergy if you put them near each other, okay. so they're going to get you extra points. And then certain rooms that don't want to be next to each other, like obviously a music room doesn't want to be next to a sleeping room. And so if those rooms well, have to be Well, it depends. My, other... my daughter likes to sleep with music, so you never know. Well, yeah, I guess lullabies and harps right? are music. So, exactly. Um, but yeah, so they're going to be deficit points for different things that you sure. put together too. And so you're building this really neat, cool-looking castle in front of yourself. Um and it's one of my favorites because no matter how many times I win or lose the game, whenever I get to the end, I always get to snap a picture of my castle. And it's always yeah, different, right. always really neat. It looks crazy. It makes me feel like I'm a little bit mad. So <laughs> uh, it's one that's a lot of fun because you really get to you get to feel like you're creating something. Right. And you feel like it's never going to be the same as anybody else's or even as anyone you've done before. So I really, really like that. And the art on it is just really great, really awesome. So you're building a castle for the Mad King, and so you're getting points based on how you place rooms. Is that how it kind of works? And is it a, a point system at the end? Yeah, exactly. So there's actually going to be a really cool score track, uh, and that's one of the things we've redone for the Collector's Edition is priorly the score track just looked like a, a regular castle tower with like the crenellations at the top and uh, just kind of looked like a regular old castle. This one, we've actually done a summer and a winter double-sided scoreboard. Oh, wow. So the winter oh, scoreboard nice. is actually going to sit on your table uh, vertically. And so you'll be able to have your game trays uh, and scoreboard set up vertically with that one. And then the wow. summer one is going to be on the opposing side. And then you'll put your game trays into that. And then you can move around the score track. Um, and it's really, really beautiful. We had our graphic designer design this really, really rich environment for these game trays to sit on. That is cool. Like building building these castles. Like actually, the first thing that came to mind in that idea of creating these wild and crazy things was the the Winchester house. If you're familiar with that house, where she just the Mary Winchester just kept building it and building it because she she just it's a, it's a real house. Look it up if you don't know it. She for her whole life she never stopped building onto the house kept adding things, she kept yeah. adding it because it was trying to, she was trying to keep the bad spirits away and she she felt like she was being told she had to keep adding on to uh onto this house it's it's really fascinating story and if you've never seen the winchester house look it up i'm gonna have to look it up because i actually haven't but the thing that i actually the first year i went to essen so essen spiel which is over mm -hmm. in germany every yep. year um, I actually got to go to New Schwanstein, which is okay. the first castle that um, King Ludwig actually had built. And so oh. it was really, really cool to actually go see this physical castle that this guy who wasn't called Mad King Ludwig at the time, he was just King Ludwig yeah. II. Right. Um, but he actually built all these extravagant castles all over Germany and uh, Bavaria just to, because he had the money to do right. it. Right. And he just wanted, um, and then the final building he built is actually, we have, another title called the palace of mad king ludwig okay um, which is a standalone sequel and it's based on the palace that king ludwig built which was designed to replicate the palace of versailles he was really mm -hmm. jealous and he wanted to have one in bavaria because <laughs> he had all this money and he's sure. like i'm gonna have one too exactly um, must be nice so to have that kind of castle money lying right? around you'd think that but as he's building this thing um this this was like he was blowing out all the country's money. He mysteriously drowned in a pond. So he had an obsession with swans, which you'll notice swans will be a theme in the castles games, okay. in the palace games. He had all these ponds built and all these swans. 
Um, but yeah, mysteriously just came up and dead in a in a puddle. Uh, so we, they don't know what happened to him. Then. Could be foul play. Could be <laughs> some angry Bavarian citizens. Right. Right. So the the game was originally released in in 2014. Um, why why now for a collector's edition? So it's one of the games that is considered, I guess, an old game. And I know that's super right. weird to say 2014 <laughs> old game. Old game. That's like, so six yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even have its first gray hair yet. But <laughs> it is a game that's actually in our industry kind of old. Um, yeah. And so there's a lot of things that if we had as a as a company had had the resources to do. We would have loved to have done with this game. We would have loved to put so much into it because we really think it's a great theme. It's really fun to play. You win or lose, you have a great time. Um, it's beautiful to look at as you're building and playing. And so we were like, okay, well, people are still buying it. People are still super into castles. People are asking us when we're coming out with the next expansion. Yeah. I think it's time. And we saw how well we also did our uh, Suburbia Collector's Edition last year. Um, and it was kind of the same thing. People just were asking for new expansions and new things. And so we're like, all right, well, we'll we'll do a collector's edition and maybe we'll meet our, our goal. And then we yeah. blew it out of the water. So this year we said, you know what, let's take another title. that's just in the same, the same category where it could use a little better art. Um, we have some cool ideas for expansions that we can do. Um, what can we do to make this, make this show homage to it right. for all of it's done for us as Bezier, you know? So what's new in the collector's edition? What, what uh, for people who maybe already have it or for those who don't yet, what are you adding to the collector's edition? So there's a lot of really neat things for Castles fans who already have the game or already love the game. So we're including all the expansions, and a regular Castles fan may have the uh, the Secrets expansion because that was widely available in the U.S., but they're going to get the Polish expansion, which was not really available, mm. brand new Towers expansion, um, which adds uh, 3D towers that you're actually going to be placing what? Um, personal goals in that are going to okay. sit on these rooms that you've built. That's cool. Um, yeah, there's I think there's six of them. There's one for each room type, so it's really they're beautiful too. They're really going to be they're going to come painted, and they're just really nice 3D wow. um, towers. And then the other thing that I really, really am, I'd say is probably my, I don't know, it's probably my favorite change to the game is this thing called decrees. And so with these royal decrees, what you're doing is it starts you out with a, a player, a secret player goal, essentially a player power almost okay. that is unique to you. So maybe you get extra points for sleeping rooms, or maybe you get extra points for every hallway you construct in your castle. But it's, it's different to you, and it's different every time you play. And so there's all kinds of secret things that you'll be able to do. Like maybe every time you build this kind of room, you get to take an extra this. Or, um, But it's something that as many times as I played the game, I never had thought about adding. It was something that we were like, oh, well, why didn't we ever think of right? this before? Like it's such a cool idea, like yeah. asymmetric player starting abilities. Like, And so we, we've done that with a couple of games since castles originally came out and we we're like you know what that's something that could really really um do a cool thing for this game uh, so we added that as another expansion so you're essentially getting three additional expansions with the base game of castles on top of those miniatures um it adds a fifth player which doesn't sound like a huge deal but like to gamers that's a pretty big deal like that yeah. fifth player if you know five people you're gonna want to be able to <laughs> let that like instead of saying, "Hey, you go sit over in the corner," you can now play. It's That's nice. Right. Yeah, I I don't know that always that like break apart where it's like, "Oh, we can split up three and two, or we can I don't know like that that one person brings an extra person. Like four is a great count, but every now and then, like just having the ability to play five is super nice. Yeah. Um, and then all the all new artwork. I'd say the all new artwork is also in my top new things coming out with it, just because mm -hmm. we've hidden a bunch of Easter eggs. Oh, and nice. the art is definitely the thing that needed the biggest facelift in the game. Yeah. Do you have, yes. do you, without, I guess, I don't know if you want to spoil anything or not, but do you have a favorite Easter egg of one of the things you've done? Uh, so we had Easter egg, we had a handful of Easter eggs in the original printing of Castles. So we've kind of taken some of those and altered them. And then we also allowed all the staff members, um, all the employees at Bezier to contribute a personal Easter egg ah, from something. Oh, nice. nice. Um, so I won't spoil too many, but one of my, one of the ones that I like, and it's not mine because I don't want to tell anybody mine. <laughs> oh. uh, one of the ones I like is called the train room. And in the train room, there's actually a copy of Whistle Stop 
uh, in in like the tables, and you can see it like sitting on the table that somebody has whistle stop in the train room. Nice. Um, so I think that's kind of cool to connect other games together. Um, and then as you find them, um, you'll see, oh, that's kind of strange. Feel free to reach out to me or message Bezier, like, hey, is this an Easter egg? Did I find this? Because we we love putting them in there, yes. and they're just little things that make us laugh, and we hope they make you guys laugh too. Well, stuff like that in artwork is awesome. When you can see something and like that is cool. Just seeing something little like that is yeah. It just yeah. it adds personality to the game. Yeah, any I I think that it doesn't. It makes it. It just makes it more entertaining. Like you're looking for more on the tile. Like yes. you're not just like that tile looks cool when you look at it you're really looking at the art and you're like oh is something in that chair or is there something hidden here that's right um i like that i think that's kind of cool as long as someone doesn't go too far and ends up like taking three hours on their turn because they're looking for a new <laughs> yeah yeah it's you also to, you get a little a timer to, to stop them from being able to right do that. it's also the meta game you know it's it's that seeing something in the in maybe like seeing another game inside the game you're playing you know, it's just, it's, it's a bit of that, that meta. It's just, everyone loves meta things. Yeah. So you, you talked about the expansions. Um, are they going to be available separately through your campaign? And will they work with the original? Like if somebody owns, uh, you know, the original copy, will it, will it uh, seamlessly work? Or are they going to need some sort of conversion kit? So that's an interesting question. And it's actually one that I had to look up the answer to maybe a <laughs> week ago. Somebody asked the same thing. And I was like, I don't know. Um, so I do know now. Okay, uh, right. So they they will technically work. So okay. your rooms and things will technically work with the old game, but there won't really be a way to get the expansions without getting the collector's edition. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe a couple years down the road, we may release the expansions individually. But as of right now, um, Castles and its expansion are out and they exist. Uh, Secrets is already out and they exist. <laughs> And so the other ones are only going to be available in the collector's edition for at least a couple of years. Okay, so this okay. Kickstarter is solely for the collector's edition, and you're going to get everything. There's no choice of, of just choosing some of the expansions you may not have. Yeah, exactly. You're going to get all four expansions with it. Okay, okay. okay. Now, what about post-Kickstarter? Obviously, like, is this, is this collector's edition just for the Kickstarter, or is this going to be readily available on your website after, you're, after the Kickstarter is done and funded? And so distributed. we're going to be we're going to be going through the same kind of route as we did when we did Suburbia Collector's Edition, where we're going to do a limited print run okay. um, after the game. So we'll obviously have our Kickstarter, and then we'll do X number of a limited print run of it and see how it goes. If it okay. sells out super fast or it's really in high demand, we'll totally do another small print run. Okay. Um, but with Suburbia right now, uh, we are not going to do another print run of the Collector's Edition just because of the high price point. Okay. And so what we've done with Suburbia Collector's Edition, now that it's been out for a couple of years, um, is we'll eventually be releasing the base game with the new art. But that'll, that's still in the uh -huh. pipeline to come out, I think, in six months, maybe a year from now. So, um, again, like maybe in a couple of years, like three or four years, Castles will come out with the base and art. But really, you want to get this Collector's Edition because you won't get the towers. You won't get all this cool stuff. Uh -huh. And it's only going to be through the Kickstarter. Yeah, and the, yeah. well, post Kickstarter, yeah, we'll have a backer kit open after the Kickstarter, so people will be able to get in late. But yeah, it uh, retail stores will have to pick it up and be able to sell it um, through distribution uh, okay. if they if they want to. But it's really not going to be one of those things that you're going to go to a store and regularly see on a shelf, just because the price yeah. point's a little high. They're not going to stock it on all the regular shelves. That makes sense, of course. So is this the last of the uh, escapades of the, the Mad King that we're going to see? Are we going to see, you know, other other games, the bridges of Mad King Ludwig? Or, uh... <laughs> so Mad King Ludwig is a pretty awesome guy. And a lot of people really like him. So I know that um, Stonemeyer actually did Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig, okay. which I thought was a really cool branding of Between Two Cities and Castles of Mad King Ludwig kind of mashing them up. Yeah. Um, and then we obviously have the Palace of Mad King Ludwig, which is the standalone expansion. Right. Yeah. I think for now, um, we'll probably put castles to bed for a while. We put a lot of work into this. I mean, the collector's edition, um, we did a lot of research. We sent out a lot of surveys. We did a ton of playtesting in-house. And we essentially, our goal was to collect, all right, what's what's anything that someone could want? What are, what are right. these things that people are itching to get? And then what can we do to improve this game to its maximum potential? So ideally, we won't have to do it again. So what's your favorite new component in the collector's edition? 
Ah. Uh, it sounds silly, but the game trays have revolutionized castles for me. Game trays are amazing. Yeah, especially with long setup games. And so Castles is a game that um, I know that you said you haven't played it yet, but it takes a little bit to set up. There's a lot of, you have to put the board together and get the pieces out and do this and this. So with the game trays, it takes five minutes to set the yeah. thing up. You pull the game trays out, you put them, click them into whichever the summer or the winter player scoreboard, whichever one you want, yeah. you're yeah. good to play. Um, it's not this big pageantry of having to put stuff together. It's five minutes, break it out and play it. And yeah. for me, all of my favorite games when I started gaming um, just took forever to set up. Like yep. all the best ones, all the coolest ones. It's like, all right, it's going to, you guys chill out for like 10, 15 minutes. Gloomhaven, anyone? Game up. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's more than 10. But, yeah. Gloomhaven is more 15. like, more oh, like 15 yeah, yeah, minutes yeah. So or like more. The, the game trays for this, like the ability to just say, yeah, it's like, let's just break this out and play it. Like that has really changed the game for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now I want to give you an opportunity, Matt, since you are the trade show manager for all of Bezier games. Um, why don't you tell us a bit about Bezier games themselves and some of your favorite games that you think people should check out? Yeah, absolutely. So Bezier games, one of the reasons that I kind of jumped on with them specifically um, is they brand themselves as the new classics. And when I was looking into them and I was interviewing with them, I asked them kind of what that meant. Like, what's that, what's the new classics? Like, that sounds cool. <laughs> Yeah. What does that mean? And so what they told me, is, and it really made me eagerly want this job, is it's about creating games that people want to keep on their shelves, that they can break out with their family anytime they want and play with cousins, brothers. Um, it's going to be a good game for entry-level people. It's got to be a game that brings people together. Um, you'll notice not a lot of our games have a lot of combat in them, um, not a ton of take that to them. We want these to be games that you're going to put on your shelf and they're just going to stay like right. they're going to they're going to be there 10 years in the future, which um, we didn't quite make it to that with original printing of castles. But <laughs> of these games to sit on your shelves for 10 years and you still break them out. We don't want those to be collecting dust. And so I think that's really special because when I was growing up, that was one of the ways I connected, especially with my cousins, mm -hmm. uh, is we lived on different sides of state like we never saw each other but when we came together like we'd break out card games we'd break out uno we'd break out a um, mousetrap like all oh, these yeah. crazy games that we oh, play yeah. as kids mousetrap was always more setting it up and playing with it than actually playing. i would break but... out i would break out clue in fact my my copy of clue that i have was purchased in like 1972 and i still have it so. yeah yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's pretty beat up. The box, right? The box is pretty beat up, but ev yeah. all the components are still there. And I bet you you've had some of the best experiences. Oh yeah, with that, that game. Oh yeah, craziest games, like hilarious nights at three in the morning playing <laughs> Clue. And so that's what we want to be. We want to be those games on people's shelves that help you create those experiences because um, you can't manufacture those. Like we, as much as we want to give them to you, we can't. So we can give you all the tools, and that's our goal is to give people all the tools so they can have these experiences with their family and their friends and stuff and that rang really special to me as a company yeah. well, they didn't say we want to make a ton of money <laughs> we want to print the we want to print this game and sell all the copies uh no it was we want to create these experiences for people we want to we want to make want to give people something they can enjoy and i don't know that's that's special as a company it is it is so what are some of your favorite bezier games what are your go-to so my first I, castles is i got a special place in my heart uh, me and my wife started playing it. Uh, it was the first like board game, board game we played together. Um, and she was like, I really like this. I'm into, I, I want to play more board games. Like what else is out there? Oh, so and you're so telling me, me this is the game I need to get my wife into gaming. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. You have to get it. You have to get this game. Okay. Okay. So you're designing a castle, right? Like you're putting together this beautiful castle. How can you not enjoy it? And so my wife loved it. And so we've been, I've got all these games on my shelf and all these games in my closets. And um, it's all because of Castles of Mad King Ludwig. I mean, it's all because of that oh my game. Gosh, and okay. That's actually one of the things that helped me pursue my, my job at Bezier's when I saw that they were hiring. I was, I knew them from one night and I knew them from Castles of Mad King Ludwig. And I was like, wow, that'd be a really great company. I really like their stuff. And I hadn't heard of the rest of the catalog, but everything else in the catalog is really good. If there's a hidden gem I had to give you in our catalog, though, it'd be One Week Ultimate Werewolf. And so oh. One Week Ultimate Werewolf takes, especially, I mean, someone who loves Clue, I always compare it to if you took One Night and mixed it with Clue. 
um, okay. because you're moving around this castle uh, into different rooms. And depending on what room you are, you can view another person's token, swap tokens with them, um, maybe steal tokens or move someone from one room to another. So as you're doing these different things in these rooms, um, other people's eyes are closed. And so they have to decide if they trust what you did or oh. didn't do, trust what you said you saw or didn't see based on what room you're in and what cards you're playing. Uh, so it's really, really fun. It gives it that like intense, like, I think you're a werewolf, but I am not so sure. Like, And you're just like that last minute yeah. biting your fingers. But it takes place over uh, five to seven rounds, depending on player count. But so it's, it's, taken it's, your, yeah. it's taken the typical werewolf game, but made it an actual board game. Yes, exactly right. That's and awesome. It is, Very it's cool. one that I don't know why, when it came out, that it kind of fell where it didn't get a ton of press, but I love it. Like, I would play it anytime. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Matt, it has been such a pleasure talking to you. Uh, Castles of Mad King Ludwig, obviously you've convinced me that I need to introduce this to not only myself, but my wife to get her into gaming. But it's uh, Collector's Edition. It's on Kickstarter now. Everybody, go check it out if you've never played it, or even if you're a fan. You obviously know you need to, to get the Collector's Edition based on what Matt said. It sounds so cool. New artwork, 3D pieces. Come on. Who doesn't want that in their game, right? Matt, it has been such a pleasure talking to you, and good luck with the campaign. And uh, that, yeah, good luck. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys so much for talking to me. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and checking out everything about Castles of Mad King Ludwig Collector's Edition, now available on Kickstarter. Make sure that you guys uh, subscribe to OMG Nexus right here below me to get all the cool details and all the cool things coming out.